and welcome to the Analog Toys live stream. And I've been really looking forward to this one because I've got two of my best friends here to, to join me. Um, first of all, we've got Bobby Valor from Valorverse. How are you doing, Bobby? What's up, gang? Thanks for tuning in. And uh, my good friend Michael French of Retro Blasting. How are you, Michael? I'm fine. I'm. I just realized that half of my lighting scheme for this area that I live stream in is this monitor right here, which is really pathetic when you think about it. So, because the, the <laughs> monitor went off and half my face went, and I'm like, so uh, yeah. So I'll have to get a light over there. That's not good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Hi. So, um, we've already got a couple of super chats. So I'll quickly. At least so, um, Jim Largo, thank you very much. He said, cheers for, to three savvy gents who aren't afraid to speak their minds. This should be an interest. It will be an interesting conversation. Believe me. And Lyo Convoy, thank you very much. He said, the wife and I went to see the new Snake Eyes. We got there to find the theatre was closed due to a water main break. God is gracious to my family. <laughs> 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 and uh, James Salzberg, thank you, he says, for another great night. And, um, oh, and, and Brian Dillingham as well um, for the Black Series Action Force Habit. Thank you very nice. much. Nice. Um, all right. So what I wanted to, to talk about today, and I think I've got the, the perfect guests for this particular uh, topic, is I really want to discuss the, the what does the future hold for G.I. Joe action figures and toys now that the Snake Eyes movie is, has bombed. So a quick bit of history, you know, G.I. Joe is the grandfather of action figures. He was, you know, often regarded as the, the first action figure in the 60s. It was incredibly popular, kind of died away um, in the mid to late 70s, and then had an incredible resurgence in the 1980s when he was brought out in a three and three quarter inch scale along with a comic book storyline where we were introduced to characters like Snake Eyes. That toy line ran from, what was it, 82 to 95? 94. 94, <clears throat> 94. Um, you know, and we've had kind of some G.I. Joe, con uh, through the 90s, even kind of after A Real American Hero went away, there was still the 12-inch collectors had the classic collection. Um, but until Classifieds came out, was it early 2020 Classifieds came out? Mm-hmm. Prior to that, we did have a bit of a period where there was kind of no G.I. Joe stuff. Mm -hmm. With the introduction of the Classifieds line, um, the first wave frustrated a lot of collectors because they didn't like the design aesthetic. Um, that has kind of improved as the line has gone along. But as they've improved things, it, they've made collectors more and more frustrated with exclusives and, and things like that. So... When was supposed? Do, do either of you know when Snake Eyes was originally slated to be released? October twenty or October. That, that sounds about right. To me. Yeah, and then of course with with the the pandemic, <clears throat> like a lot of other movies, like you know the new James Bond movie, Black Widow, etc., it got pushed back. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just going to quickly pull up onto the screen <clears throat> the box office stats for. Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. So this movie had an estimated budget of between 88 and $110 million. I think it's probably 88 million, 88 million production and then obviously all, all the marketing on top. But we had an opening weekend of 13 million, a total domestic gross of 28 million, an international gross of 8.7, and a worldwide gross of $36 million off an $88 million budget. Um, who would like to react to those stats? Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I can react to anything, but I'm, I would like to hear what Bobby has to say first, because not only of his GI Joe fandom and background, but also his experience in the toy industry with this particular company wanting with its aspirations to be a movie studio. Bobby, what do you think of these numbers, sir? Uh, I mean, the number, like numbers don't lie. Uh, you know, I know. Before someone says, well, it's COVID, blah, blah. Listen, Free Guys is exclusively in theaters, and that movie is doing phenomenal. So mm -hmm. I, that is not a factor here at all. COVID is something you cannot use as an excuse for these numbers. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I mean, the numbers are, are awful. The numbers are worse than any – the number. The numbers are probably on par with, like, Battleship numbers. I was trying to think yeah. of, like, Hasbro movies that Paramount has put out. And I think this is probably on par with that. 
And, you know, uh, I just gotten done watching it today. Um, just trying to figure out like, well, what, what, ha what happened now looking back when a movie does poorly, we're in like the social media age and, you know, responses and, and negative feedback before a movie comes out has a lot to do with a movie. One of the first movies where it happened was Green Lantern. Instead uh -huh. of people going and seeing it for themselves, they heard, oh, it's bad. I'm not going to go see it. It's not a great movie. It's not awful. It's not good. But it's not to the point where, like, you should just take someone's word for it and not go see it. Now, then you started to see it with, you know, other movies. We saw it with Justice League. And I think the only movie where it didn't really affect it was the first Suicide Squad, where the reactions, like, early reactions were terrible and, like, all this, this feedback about uh, things going on behind the scenes and reshoots and this and that. But the movie still made a ton of money, even though, you know, uh, critically it was it was panned. But box office wise, it did really well. You know, look at Solo. Solo mm -hmm. suffered from that. Um, so Snake Eyes, it, it got caught up in that. You know, it, it got pushed and pushed and pushed. And I think when you're making a movie based off of a, a property like G.I. Joe, you have to cater to the hardcore fans. And if you alienate the hardcore fans, who's left to see this movie? So you want to, you want to make sure you're making as much money as you can off your hardcore fans. Well, you know, a lot of things, the way they change story and, and, and the, you know, the actor and, and all this stuff, all this negativity that came with it, uh, that hurt the movie a lot. And I just don't, I, I don't think people, had any real desire to go see it. And also, you know, when you, when you see like marketing for a movie, you usually see a trailer a year in advance and then a second trailer and maybe even a third in some cases, you see a lot of marketing. They didn't start marketing this movie until I think like June. Uh, we saw a trailer like, you know, early summer this year. And, it, you know, it just, it just showed the lack of faith that they had in something like this. And I can touch on later the lack of faith between the studio and Hasbro based on my dealings when I was working on GI Joe three, you know, that, that coincide with this. Oh, so the, 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 uh, unproduced GI Joe three, right? Yeah. 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 That was kind of where my reaction comes from with these numbers is that, um, you know, fool me once shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, I'm a hopeless fanboy that just can't be realistic about anything. Yep. And I didn't go see the first G.I. Joe film because I saw the trailer and I, I grew up on the comic. I grew up on the toys, the cartoon for Real American Hero, which is what they were basing it on. They weren't basing it on 70s Adventure Team. They weren't, yeah, sure, they had the throwaway line in that movie that said Kung Fu Grip, her, her, her or whatever, but they were basing it on the 80s G.I. Joe mythology, Cobra Commander, Destro, Baroness, all that stuff was in there. So I'm seeing this trailer for this Rise of Cobra, and I'm going, do they want to make G.I. Joe, or do they want to make Halo? Like, what are they <laughs> What are they trying to do here with these suits and the this and the that, and everybody looks the same, nobody's dressed in a signature gear, which, by the way, there's a reason Hasbro eventually got away from the all olive drab guys because they realized they needed to differentiate the characters in fiction, you know, like visually for the audience, which again, you can say what you want about not being realistic military, but from a fictional storytelling perspective, it actually makes sense. And Hasbro homogenized all the characters, you know, visually. So it's hard to tell anybody apart. Um, I could go into some of the nitty gritty about it, but I won't. But my point is that I didn't go see that movie. I was like, no. And then, of course, the movie was a stinker. <clears throat> Got a lot of money on hype, a lot of being a relative term, not Transformers money, but it did well enough to get a sequel. And everyone's like, well, the sequel's got The Rock in it. And I'm like, what? so I saw the trailer for it. Looks like, it looks like trash. And, of course, it was worse than the first one. And so then when they said G.I. Joe Snake Eyes, I'm like, no, I'm not going to see that. There's no way battleship gi joe like the only reason that transformers did well it's not because those movies are good it's because big robots are big business overseas and it doesn't require it doesn't have as much of a language barrier so so people yeah. who don't speak english can still just go and enjoy 
big robots doing crazy things. You know, um, I just get back to the same thing. I, we can get into the story points in a minute, but I've said it in many of my videos. Hasbro CEO has a fixation on transforming, no pun intended, his company into a movie studio. Mm -hmm. And that is not what they should be focused on. And they've been focused on it too long to the point that they can't even get their products into stores. They're not focused on their products anymore. They're doing layups. And my lighting went off because I'm using a monitor. They're doing layups. <laughs> They're doing these layups all the time with just their products. It's like another six inch figure here, another six inch figure there. Oh, let's do a HasLab pro. Meanwhile, the, the leadership of the company, the reason everything is so lackadaisical, I believe from working in corporations for 12 years, is that when the executive group, when the people in the mahogany room sitting at the big long table have a, a thought direction they're going in, it actually does affect how the rest of the business operates. Like it does trickle down and affect the day-to-day -day operation and priorities of the business. So if you've got this guy that's been installed there for, well, I don't know, 10, 15 years, however long he's been the CEO, and all he wants to do is be a movie studio, it's going to start to affect their product output, their delivery, the quality of their stuff. Like, I, just look at the first wave of G.I. Joe Classifieds. I mean, you talk about being out to lunch with that brand. And that's Hasbro's, that's Hasbro's signature brand that put them on the map. You know, that's like Kenner Star Wars. That's their Kenner Star Wars was G.I. Joe. And they've, they have literally diluted their decision-making uh, pantheon to the point that everybody who's there doesn't even know what G.I. Joe was all about for Hasbro anymore. They're just like, six inch buck and uh, uh, uh. I'm out. Like I'll shut up now, but we can get into like the story points as well. Cause visually from a story perspective, watching the trailer for snake eyes, I was like, Oh, <laughs> and I don't, I'm not talking about anything political. I'm not talking about anything regarding that stuff. You know, I don't do that. I'm talking about as somebody who read the comics and who knows what Snake Eyes' mythology is and how that story is supposed to work and why it had impact and agency when we were kids. They they clearly had broken it. Like they were like, no, we're not interested in that. We're interested in kick, punch. It's all in the mind. Kick, punch, sword. Kick, punch, sword. And it's like, that's not what Snake Eyes is. So anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Just made a comment here saying Tony's making that face that says so many super chats to read, which is true. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this, uh, stream's going crazy. No, no apologies. Um, Jody, thank you very much for the super chat. Just cause. Um, Matt Movies, good to see you here. Um, Robert Chambers says, I gave some to Restro Blasting yesterday, and here is some for you as well, because that movie isn't a G.I. Joe movie, just a money grab. Yep. It's a Fast and the Furious movie with ninjas. Um, Matt Movies uh, says, just want to say, yo, Joe, this is a great team up. Thank you, Matt. And Robert Chambers says, hello, I told my girlfriend, wanted to see the recent movie. I told her flat out, if you want to go see it, I won't waste my time or money on it. Probably a good choice. Um, Reclaimers, how you doing, Matt? It says, love it or hate it, an IP movie that loses the studio almost 150 million will never get another film made. Um, every suit will never roll that dice again. Mm -hmm. You're a smart man, Matt Swafford. Smart <laughs> man. Uh, Jesus says, uh, gents, thoughts on the Super 7, 7-inch seven Geo Ultimate figures? <laughs> that, that's all yeah. I got. <laughs> Yeah. Have you ever have you ever heard me on a podcast talk about Super 7? I... <laughs> anyone, and you'll know my opinions on anything made by Super 7. It all kind of gels Hashtag. together because they put the same amount of effort into everything they do. Hashtag primer hawks. <laughs> uh, Chris, thank you for the super chat. He says, just because this is an awesome lineup. Appreciate that. Uh, Jay Famous says, the accelerator suits in Rise of Cobra were there because the director had been pitching a movie about guys in powered armor called Accelerator for years. See? I should have just called it Accelerator then. Right. Um, David, thank you for the super chat. It says the Hasbro CEO should follow the George Costanza model to success. Do the opposite of what your, your instincts tell him and we'll get a good movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You should just give up. Uh, Liar Convoy Review says, controversial take. Going live action with these cartoon-based legacy properties <clears> would <throat> always be a mistake. 
They'll focus on realism and big names instead of story and characterization. Animate it. Fair yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, Gojatron says, G.I. Joe, a real American hero, will be tailor-made for Hollywood's recent push for diversity, yet they keep ignoring the full 80s lineup of characters. Yes, they do. And call a hipster robot. Thank you, he says. I hope this failure doesn't lead to the Hasbro universe, too many universes. Um, it won't be leading to, to very much at all. So uh, I think before we, we move on, I, I want to state up front, um, I am a huge G.I. Joe fan. I'm not here to hate on G.I. Joe, and I think it's the same for, I don't want to speak for you guys, but, you know. Are, are, are we talking about G.I. Joe as a legacy property or current G.I. Joe? I am here to hate on current G.I. Joe. I'm, I oh, am yeah, yeah. But on, as, as, a, as a legacy property, it was it's one of my favorite toy lines. I love, obviously, I grew up with Action Force comics, but it was very, very similar, very similar storyline, you know, particularly the origin of, of Snake Eyes. That was just taken mm -hmm. from the American comic and put into uh, into the Action Force Weekly. So I'm, I, I'm not a, I'm wearing a G.I. Joe shirt. I'm not a, I'm not a G.I. Joe hater, but um, I don't like the direction that Hasbro is, is taking the property, be it, you know, in, in toys or in movies. Um, and when your opening box office numbers, your opening weekend is beaten by an M. Night Shyamalan film <laughs> that I had never heard of and I've never even seen a trailer for, yeah, you have pushed out a turkey. Yeah, you have put a turkey into cinemas. When, like, when, <clears throat> when was the last time anyone got hyped for a Shyamalan movie? I, and even when I saw the trailer for it here, because they had it on playing on YouTube constantly in front of videos here, that I was like, oh, that looks horrible. Why would anybody living in these days and times go to see a movie that's that big of a downer, depressing for the Shyamalan film? I was like, what? And it beat Snake Eyes, the G.I. Joe film. That means that the audience has said the Tomb Raider effect is in full effect here. Like, so for those of you in the audience that don't know what that is, it was an industry term that refers to when a, a initial film that comes out in an intended franchise isn't good, but the hype for it and the anticipation for that franchise finally getting a live action film is such that it makes sufficient numbers at the box office, even though the critical reaction is bad, they green light a sequel. And then the sequel comes out and nobody goes to see it, even if it's superior <laughs> or not, because they've been burned the last time. Well, if you get a third from that you, and you've made two turkeys, you're toast. That's it. There's nothing left. So uh, Snake Eyes is coming along after two turkeys. And the general audience has learned, even if they're not invested in G.I. Joe, they've learned G.I. Joe equals bad movie. I'm not going to see that. I will not see Mark Wahlberg, you know, biting the uh, cap off of a beer bottle that rolled into the street while chasing Transformers in this. I know that for a fact. So there's nothing for me here in this movie. <laughs> you know? You know, Did Mark Wahlberg actually do that in a Transformers film? Huh? Ugh. <laughs> uh, uh, real, real quick, Bobby. Um, Salvador says, well, 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 if it isn't the handsomest men in the toy world, speaking frankly, the future of G.I. Joe lies squarely with Action Force. I can't see Hasbro ever redeeming themselves. Um, and Matt Movies, thank you again. He says, do you think we'll ever see a cut of the original 87 animated film where Duke, where Duke is actually killed and without the terrible ADR lines about his coma? Uh, no, I, I don't. No. I don't think we will. No. I don't know if that footage even still exists. I wonder if it got thrown away. Probably. Yeah. And um, Bjorn, um, thank you, Bjorn, for your conduct over the last few days. It's much appreciated. Uh, I still want that Chuckles movie we were promised by <laughs> Mr. Watersloo all those years ago. Um, we, we got it. It was called Casino Royale. So <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, uh. so, so, Bobby, as someone who, you know, you can't get much more of a, a toy industry insider than yourself, um, you've worked on G.I. Joe, you're a lifelong fan, you worked at Hasbro for many years. Give us your thoughts on how the failure of Snake Eyes at the box office is going to affect the future of this franchise in toy stores. 
Um, what a time to freeze up, Bobby. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, go ahead, sir. Uh, Damon Huey, thank you for the super chat. It says, hello, gents. I haven't seen Snake Eyes, but based on Double Toasted's review of the movie, it sounds like an 80s ninja film done badly, so much so that American Ninja 3 Blood Hunt is a better Snake Eyes origin movie. I don't think I've ever seen American Ninja 3. I've definitely seen 1 and 2. I have American Ninja 3 in the set, the Blu-ray set, but I've never actually gotten past 2 to watch it. So I'm in the yeah. same boat with you. I need. I think I have a 4 of them in that set. I need to go check. But I, yeah, I do need to sit down and finally watch all of those at some point yeah yeah um yeah while bobby is still thinking about his answer um i uh, oh there he goes maybe he's, he's coming back, back here, he? maybe he's coming back um yeah. but yeah i uh i don't think there is a future at this point because the suspicion always was that classifieds originally came out with that wave that looked so weird because they were just trying to pave the runway for snake eyes um yeah. and some of those marketing deals and honestly it, the Snake Eyes movie failing as bad as it did, Hasbro's going to look at the whole G.I. Joe experiment um, as now unnecessary because they don't I, I think they're not going to see any momentum. They they're not going to see a path to momentum for the product line from it. So there you already can't find them in stores anyway. So what's less than nothing? I mean, they yeah. don't have to do much to pull the plug on this whole thing, you know, I, it's like, oh, we got to stop sending those two action figures to the United States every month. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, like. I, so that there, there was some leaked announcements, I think, of, of, of maybe early this week or but within the last two weeks. Um, there was some some leaked um, product, inf upcoming product information mm -hmm. that says that in um, next year, they're going to come out with Ali Viper, Spirit, stalker outback they're going to do some tiger force figures um so when i posted the link to this stream like three days ago you know this is the topic um and people have there were there were a, a percentage of the the audience or the, the commenters on social media saying well okay yeah snake eyes bombed but we've just had all these um um uh, products announcements leaked uh -huh. um for all this stuff and i'm like just because product announcements are leaked and they may have done you know there may have been a certain way down prototyping stages and, and things like that doesn't mean that they won't cancel it like it's happened before you 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 look at uh, i mean your fire hose a fun video mm -hmm. was really based on a lot of those all those big star wars announcements that just yeah. never came to anything right um just because a, a bit of product information has been leaked doesn't mean that you're actually going to get all of those characters next year. They might just cut the cord and go yeah. back to Transformers. Right. And then those things become, you know, uh, action figures of legend for the people, the few people that were like obsessed with that figure line. You know, they'll have the pictures of the unpainted bucks and everything like that. And the six ups or four ups or two ups or whatever they're called. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, there's, there's nothing – Hasbro already, through their actions 10 years ago, by just pushing Transform or Transformers – by pushing G.I. Joe into Toys R Us exclusively and letting it die there while Toys R Us itself died, um, they already kind of sent the signal as to how they felt about G.I. Joe. And then bringing it back in such an anemic way. Uh, coming out, you know, initially with that wave that, you know, everybody with a brain said, um, you literally had a slam dunk if you were going to bring out six inch figures, if you did them to look like the classic real American hero characters. And you didn't do that for reasons that I'll never understand. Um, now you're doing this very half hearted overpriced retro line and you're trying to convert the six inch line into snake eyes and it's not working. Um, yeah, there's not a lot here to back out of you know what i mean like it's I, the, the distribution's been bad everything's been selling out i've i've only ever maybe twice in stores since classified started seen a classifieds figure hanging from pegs maybe twice i i know i saw a zartan one time which i'm not buying any of them anyway and then i think i might have seen a roadblock but that could have been a bad dream 
I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. So um, maybe maybe Bobby's in a bad dream. I just had a message from Sal. He said there's actually there's a hurricane in um, um, in Rhode Island at the moment, so that's it's cut off his internet. So uh, I hope you're safe, Bobby. Um, Filippo, thank you for the super chat. He says if anything, they should take a gate James Gunn approach and not use the heavy hitters. I, I don't I don't know as I necessarily agree with that. But, Does he mean mm, like use the secondary characters or something? Yeah, like like oh, so he means like going out there not with Duke and Snake Eyes, but going out there with like Fast, Airborne, draw. fast draw and Airborne or something like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? uh, Chris Johnson, thank you for the super chat. He says, "I'm not dead yet. Miss you all." Um, and Grindhead Jim says, "Hasbro can't get the toys right these days, so it's no surprise that the film is a complete pile." Hasbro needs to double down on proper toy design. Um, thank you for the super chat, Jim. Um, I, th I think, like, you look at the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. I... Do I have to? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't dislike The Force Awakens as, as much as... I didn't love it, but I didn't... I suppose I didn't see as many warning signs as as you did when I saw The Force Awakens, but mm -hmm. I walked out of The Last Jedi. I wanted to walk out of The Last Jedi like 20 minutes in, but I had my son with me and I bought candy and Coke and right. I sat through the whole thing and I walked out of there and I was I was angry. I was like, they've Star Wars is dead now. Yeah. But then The Rise of Skywalker still makes, mm -hmm. you know, it, it wasn't as successful as the others, but it still made a bucket of money because... Star Wars does have a track record of some of you know some of the movies being absolutely excellent. Yeah, there has never been a good GI Joe movie. You know that, that so that's why, as you were saying, after two turkeys, people just mm -hmm. aren't going to go and watch the third one. I think there's false hope that gets built into that a lot. They yeah, and I I say fanboys not with any insult or mockery. I'm just that's the term, and I'm saying it as baseline as I can. Fanboys they still want to get their hopes up about stuff. So they say, well, this time it'll be different. This time it'll be good. And it's like, that's what they're banking on you to say. They don't want you to actually connect the dots. And, and But the only way to really get things to change is to not be fooled again. Um, and they're like, well, I don't believe in boycotts. It's like, we're not talking about boycotts. We're talking about smart, common sense consumerism. There's a big difference, you know? Like if Pintos yeah. keep blowing up, it's not a boycott to not buy a Pinto. It's called self-preservation. Like, you know, I don't believe in boycotts. I'm going to buy a Pinto even though they are exploding. Well, then you're just you're just Darwin's favorite target at this point. Like, go ahead. Yeah. It's it's, it's the, the, the same uh, kind of rationale you hear with people you know, talking about, like, the first wave of classifieds. Yeah. Some people just loved it anyway, bought into it because it had G.I. Joe on it. Some of us really, really disliked it. And then you had those people in the middle who were like, yeah, you know, I wanted six inch, but I didn't want it to look like this. Mm -hmm. But if I don't buy it, they won't make any more. So I need to yes. I need to buy it. I need to support the brand. That dumb attitude right there. If I don't buy it, they won't make any more. You know, I was talking a few months back um, to um, the channel Matt Tracker, and we were talking about Hasbro's alleged hopeful plans for mask which i don't think they have any plans um but it was the topic in the moment and um yeah. the guy said well why where where is hasbro on the six inch line for mask characters and i went what would be the point i said i believe you that that's probably what hasbro would do as a six inch figure line <laughs> layup if they did anything but what would be the point and it was weird because i was having to remind somebody that mask is about vehicles but Hasbro's gonna will ignore all that, and they'll just make characters in a six-inch buck, you know, because that's what they do now. They just churn them out if they ever do anything. Um, yep. And I think he said something to the effect of, "Well, well I'd have to buy them." And I'm like, "Why? Why would you have to do that?" Mask is meaningless without vehicles, even yes. more so than I think GI Joe is meaningless without vehicles. Quite frankly, I think I think a GI Joe, yeah, sure, you can have a ground group. You know, you could you could pretend that it's the rock and pick somebody else to be Sean Connery. And it's always an infiltration team or something if you wanted to. But really, G.I. Joe, even in 12 inch scale in the 60s and 70s, had vehicles like you had yep. vehicles to put them in and stuff without vehicles. And mask is even more so Hasbro's 
product instincts break these properties. Um, and that's, I think, what we've seen with with Snake Eyes um, to the Nines as a film. Yeah. So as, as someone who watched the Mask cartoon when I was a child, mm -hmm. but didn't get into collecting Mask toys until mm -hmm. quite recently, um, I remember the names of all the vehicles, or right. 90% of them, you know? I, it, it's not, not through research or whatever. I know the Switchblade. I know the Gator. Mm -hmm. I know the Rhino. I know the Thunderbolt. Right. I know the Hurricane. Apart from Matt Tracker and Miles Mayhem, mm -hmm. I had to go back and remind myself the names of the characters because yep. I didn't remember them from childhood. I, I yep. couldn't remember Bruce Sato's name. And yep. uh, We've got to catch I, up on yep, some super sorry. chats. <laughs> A world made of cardboard. Thank you very much. He said, uh, Hasbro only seems to react to things, not lead. Is it possible that the G.I. Joe Classifieds is a reaction to Bobby buying the Action Force IP? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I, I I don't think so personally. I think it's just a coincidence in timing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, James Salzberg, thank you very much. Said, I would like to go see Anthony Gambello Origins. I don't know who Anthony Gambello is. I, I feel like that name is familiar, but I'm not putting it together. Yeah. Um, Melinda, thank you for the super chat. It says fanboys also often have lower standards, so they often genuinely like those movies. In some respects, yes, that is true. Um, I did hear more than a few people who were like, I didn't think Rise of Cobra was that bad. And I'm like, so you enjoy having your pants set on fire, not in a good way. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, the Melvor, thank you for the super chat. It says, staying true to the source material is half the battle. That's the easy part. And everyone keeps screwing it up. Um, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can modernize. I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, to do G.I. Joe right, it has to be set in the 80s. I don't necessarily agree. Like if Snake Eyes Origins, he could have been an Afghan, an Afghan war vet. It could right. have been the same story. Modernized, you know, with... Mm -hmm. with um, with Stalker, Snake Eyes, and Storm Shadow all having served in Afghanistan. but Right. Um, James Goldsby, thank you for the super chat. He says, I hope they look at what Mattel are doing with the Origins line, release original O-ring figures in original packaging. Um, they won't do that. Yeah, that's never coming back. I mean, not no. from them. Um, oh, okay, James Salzburg. <laughs> Anthony Gambello is the real name on Flash from season Series 2. Oh, well, I mean, I, is he referring to making Flash Flash from G.I. Joe as well, like a twofer? Where he's like I a laser so. rifle trooper that's also the fastest man in the world? Because that would be a match. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we were just talking about the, the the movies then, you know, the people talking about you know, the rise of Cobra. I mean, oh, well, I didn't think it was that bad. I, I get this often. Uh, I'm sure you do too. When... People tell me, look, you know, what you need to do when you go and watch this movie is just don't think about it too much mm -hmm. or switch your brain off when you go in the theater. I was like, um, I don't have an on off switch. I can't switch off my brain when I watch a movie. Yeah, I can't either. The only way I do that is fall asleep in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, go in and don't think about it too much. Um, I don't know why we go watching it. Well, that's the thing. If I don't want to think about something too much, why would I pay to go do that? I could just turn on whatever is on Netflix or Hulu or Prime. Just literally, you can go on Amazon Prime, pick anything that's on there for free because it's always trash. And, and that'll turn your brain off. And you didn't have to spend the 30 bucks to go to a theater and see it and wear a mask and do all that weird stuff. You could literally sit and never go anywhere and turn your brain off every time. Like, why do I need to go watch a new $200 million film to do that. If you're spending $200 million on a film or 150 million, you really shouldn't be making a brain turn off or film. Like, yeah. you know. Um, Hasbro has a good track record. Because even the Transformer films, as much as they've been financially successful, um, you don't need your brain for, for anything there. No, and it, it should be a wake up call to them that they're always critically dragged you know they're critically just blasted every single time and rightfully so they're only they were only getting their money back around because at first hype because oh transformers and then overseas people were like yay robots 
which again, yeah. not, not knocking anybody, but I'm just saying they could go in there and watch, watch it and go, Oh, we don't have to worry about, you know, the script so much. We're, we're going to see cool robot effects and, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hazu says uh, he wants a shipwreck origins movie. I don't know about that. <laughs> oh man! Like who are you gonna? Who are you gonna? What are you gonna do? Make Christian Slater grow a beard and just be there <laughs> with like a hat on? Be yeah, creepy. Jack Nicholson's too old now. <laughs> right, and, and Christian Slater always admitted to be he, his whole career was on a bad Jack Nicholson impression. He said that. So yeah, yeah. Um, it, they shouldn't even be doing. I mean, there's not going to be another G.I. Joe film. No. At least for... No. I don't even know if G.I. Joe will be around in another 20 years, but it'll take a period of about that before someone ever think, oh, maybe we'll do right. a game. They shouldn't be doing Origins films at all, you know? No. G.I. Joe was teams of people. Yes. Um You know, in, in, in a long-running comic storyline, you have... It's like an ongoing TV series. Right. You have the opportunity to go back and show some of the background of these characters. But Snake Eyes Origin didn't come out till roughly what issue in the first? Uh, Snake, the Snake Eyes, yeah, Snake Eyes Origin didn't show up for, uh, in the comics for quite a while. They hinted at it starting in 21, and yeah. then they started to build on it. Um, but uh, but yeah, see, that's that's where it gets back to the whole thing of you know, if we make a G.I. Joe film, does it have to be set in the 80s? And my argument, because we're living in a, I hate to use the word postmodern, but we're living in a postmodern society when it comes to military conflict, because we've had a lot of them over the last 20 years, and most of them have not resolved themselves properly. Like, even ones we all weren't directly involved in, whether it was the Ukraine and all this stuff and the modern reporting of them and everything corporations are scared off by that stuff and military that's why gi joe died on the vine in 2010 um oh cool to call in show sorry i'm sorry you you are <laughs> I'm, um, the, uh, I'm the asshole in in the in new england that's experiencing a hurricane oh right uh duck yeah, and cover. Um, yeah duck and sound cover. message said you had a hurricane so we figured um, that was what was going on but yeah like i think i think gi joe as a movie would only work in live action if it was authentically set in the 80s and i don't mean a wedding singer 80s i mean like 80s is the 80s is just the backdrop for this thing because gi joe works when you don't have cell phones <coughs> with, meaning if they want to use those characters the ninjas the this the that it has to work in a pre-cell phone pre-internet age a war games age you know like a yeah. that kind of thing i've always visualized you know date stamp at the bottom you know in just a very basic font something something 1982 and it's got that 80s rain you know that was in movies like goonies and first blood coming down and you see the convoy of trucks and jeeps pulling in and it's just rain in the foreground plinking off of a machine gun barrel that's guarding an american facility which you'll find out very quickly is the pit and it just pans yeah. over and it's rock and roll and zap just sitting behind these you know the checkpoint and they're just they just start to kind of banter and complain and they've got the 80s you know um uniforms on and stuff and then the whole movie unfurls i mean you're not making a joke out of the 80s you're just setting it where it belongs where it worked and if we're going to reinvent gi joe it's going to pale in compare it's going to look if you reinvent gi joe modern and you try and make it this serious thing it's going to look insulting to all the real military stories like the outposts and everything else that have been made, you know, it's going to be like, oh, I don't, I don't know. You've all, you've got to set it in the past. It, that's yeah. my take on it. So uh, just real quick, a couple of super chats, um, a world made of cardboard. Thank you again. Um, Hasbro reinvented GI Joe for the eighties. Should they just drop the eighties line up and reinvent the line again? Uh, he knows it's not going to happen, but that, that, that may be a better option for them. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Cool Hips the Robot says, I wonder what a G.I. Joe Netflix show would look like. Probably worse than He-Man. Uh, they, they, they could do something good with it. Um, thank you for the super chat, by the way. Um, just don't put Kevin Smith at the helm. Yeah. And 
Tree Theodore, uh, thank you for the kind super chat. It says, thanks, gentlemen. Always informative and quality driven. Uh, so, Bobby, you froze at the perfect moment. <laughs> I just hyped you up as this toy industry insider, worked at Hasbro for many, many years. Um, Careful. Hasbro is listening. They're going to cancel him out again. The moment he starts talking, they're going to come in and hit oh. my button. <laughs> that, they're the ones that froze his internet before. They're It's code. They're hurricane. That's what That's they are. Right. So be careful. That's right. Hurricane Hasbro. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Real quick. Um, KBA, thanks for the super chat. He says, thanks for all the work you guys do. There's a lot of objectivity. There's a lot of objectively bad movies I enjoy. Rise of Cobra is not one of them. No. Um, yeah. Um, ah, I'm sorry. Um, Miss Super Chat. Reclaimers Vintage says, the Delta Force and Predator are still the two best G.I. Joe movies we've ever gotten. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so, Bobby, where do you... Th how do you think the box office failure of Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins is, what, what's going to be the conversations in, you know, the corporate levels of Hasbro at the moment about where they're going to go with, particularly with the classified line, because that's really the only kind of action figure line out there. Obviously, they've done some, um, some product for Snake Eyes, but, you know, it's all going so, to be peg I, I've been just prepping for for this question since you know i knew i was coming on the show you know and i'm trying to think of everything i experienced when i was there and trying to you know figure out uh you know how they're reacting because they have the same same leadership is there the same leadership that was there when they told us that a six inch line uh can't go to retail on its own because there has to be entertainment behind it so thinking on, uh, along those lines and being a part of other lines that have gone on a downturn. I think moving forward, you're going to get a few more waves of classified because I think that they've tooled up some, like we've seen some, some leaked images of like Ali Viper and the bat, uh, you know, so they're, they're probably going to put another wave, maybe two out, but also I wouldn't be surprised if the entire line, becomes a target exclusive. So if you notice when retaliation came out, there was a retaliation line, which, you know, didn't do well. And there was some issues with distribution, just, you know, it, it, because the movie I think got delayed and the line came out early. And then we didn't get to the second wave until like a year later. Then after that, it became a Toys R Us exclusive. And that's where it kind of lived for the rest of the time. And, um, you know, even when I was on the brand in 2016, we were developing another TRU exclusive line. And because TRU was like, it sold really well, we, we want it. And upper management said, nope, you're not you're not getting any G.I. Joe product until there's entertainment behind it. Now, guys, I'm not trying to, like, be the G.I. Joe hater that everyone labels me as. I'm telling you facts when I was on the brand pushing for this this brand to live. These are the, the, the idiot responses that I, I, I get from upper management on trying to push the brand. So then, you know, G.I. Joe 3 kind of falls by the wayside, but then there was nothing. And then um, just before I left, they were developing a six inch line. But the six inch line was supposed to be a, a Snake Eye Storm Shadow 2 pack with Timber for, comic, uh, for Hascon. Hascom was going to be in 2019. They were working on it in 2018. So there was a team of people working on it. So when, when someone said, oh, are they just doing it because of Action Force? No, I knew they were doing it. I was trying to beat them to it because I knew that they were delaying it because they weren't going to put anything out because the Snake Eyes movie got delayed or G.I. Joe 3 fell off or whatever. So moving forward, they will, they will probably, you know, take that money that they invested in tooling uh and and put some stuff out now if you notice they when they all their all these fan first fridays or whatever stupid day of the, of the week that they're they're showing reveals how many have you seen for for gi joe couple couple Mar legends of black series are getting a ton of them um gi joe's not get any so they'll probably do one more but i think they're also trying to figure out where this line is going which is probably why you haven't seen any because also 
retail affects how distribution goes because the, the, the kid line I've seen, I haven't seen the kid line anywhere. My opinion is probably the kid line's not doing well because the movie's not made for kids. You're not marketing it towards kids. So how are you going to take a PG 13 dark movie where they say shit and fuck and put that towards kids. And plus the lines like kids don't even know what GI Joe is now. So Mm -hmm. retail is going to look at it like, all right, listen, we've had a lot of negativity about, you know, the fans coming in and treating our employees like shit with, you know, with classified uh, all between stuff getting online and not being able to order it. And just that negativity. I just think the retail is probably tired of it. They're probably like, you know what, why are we wasting the shelf space on you? For the one or two cases that we get, we sell out of, but it's just not worth it. It's not worth it to invest the shelf space, which is, you know, prime real estate in the, in the toy aisle nowadays. And so oh, yeah, but re- they got plenty of room. It's not like there's anything on the shelves. Anyway. This is true. This is true. <laughs> um, so, you know, moving forward, I think you're going to get some some target. Ex- like it's just going to be target exclusive. And that's all you're going to get. Uh, you know, if I were to to guess and um, you'll probably see, you know, the first the, the next wave of classified probably by the end of the year. And then you'll maybe get one more the beginning of next year. And that'll probably be it because they're not going to they're not going to move forward with G.I. Joe. Uh, you know, this it's not like it failed, like retaliation failed, like this failed, like the worst failure Hasbro's ever had. I looked at the the uh, box office numbers for um, Battleship and that movie actually made money. So th- this is an absolute utter failure. You, <laughs> um, so to, for, for the, it to have that big of a failure and now they're scrambling, now they're trying to put it on, onto streaming and trying to make up some funds thinking people are going to pay $5 to rent it or whatever. You're not going to make up hundreds of millions of dollars on, on that. You're going to, you're going to make up a couple million. But uh, I, I just think that we're we're going to see G.I. Joe go away. You know, uh, when they bought E1, that, that entertainment company, I thought, OK, well, that's a company that does animation. Maybe there's some hope. Maybe there's some hope that they're going to do some G.I. Joe content and this and that. You've heard nothing. How how much have they used E1 at all since they bought it? Paid like a billion or so dollars for it. And they haven't used it at all. You're not you're in an age where like you should be putting out content because everyone's home and they haven't put out anything. So it just goes to show that they're not putting any sort of stock into this brand whatsoever. I mean, guys, like I'm going to tell you a straight up fact. This is an absolute fact. When I was working on on G.I. Joe three, the studio Paramount wanted to do G.I. Joe Hasbro, the company wanted to do mask. Now, when you have a studio and a, and a company at odds because they're like, well, Hasbro itself did, didn't have faith in G.I. Joe. They're like, no, we want to we want to make our Hasbro universe. So instead of using the brand that built your company, you wanted to use a brand that wasn't even yours to begin with. It was from another company that you just bought. So you've never actually put anything into mass. You've just bought the IP bought, that bought the company. Yeah. So. In that case, they, they were like, we want to we want to do this universe. Well, the universe kind of failed in the comics and that didn't really go anywhere. So, you know, Paramount was like, no, G.I. Joe is proven it makes money. We want to do G.I. Joe. And it was up and down whether The Rock was going to come back. There was talks of, are we doing it as a soft reboot? Are we doing it, you know, with The Rock involved? So, you know, we were working on concept art for both kind of thing. And, um, you know, then you know, it just, it just went away. So when, when the studio kind of doesn't have faith and, and, or the company doesn't have faith, the studio is looking for money, but now the studio who was looking for money sunk money into it and they lost money. That relationship is going to sour real fast. Cause the, at this point, Paramount's just going to be like, you know what? We only want robots. We only want transformers. They will, they will never do another GI Joe movie ever again. And also the one thing I was going to touch on before I, I got cut out was, in this movie, when you look at the title of Snake Eyes, do you know how small the word G.I. Joe is? It is yeah. like a, a tenth of the title, if that. It is the yeah. tiniest word ever. Mm-hmm. So even X-Men Origins Wolverine 
all the words were big. You're telling me that like you're trying to pitch a Snake Eyes movie, but you really don't want to brand it Snake. You really don't want to brand it GI Joe. You want to just call it Snake Eyes and think like, well, that's going to be, you know, the the factor that's going to, you know, not sour the waters. No. And then it's like the movie starts and they pan in on the the L.A. like dock port or whatever. And Snake Eyes comes up real big on the screen. And G.I. Joe is this little, 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 little tiny thing. Guys, how like you're all knowledgeable. Come on, use your big brains. Look at it and say, oh, you know what? Yeah, if I was a company, I'd probably want them to focus on the overall brand and maybe make that a little bigger. So, I mean, the writing's on the wall. It's right there. So, but that, that was a long with an answer to a simple question of where do I think the, the toys are going to go? couple waves, and that's, that's probably it. I would be incredibly surprised if you get anything past summer of next year. Now, I know, like, I, whenever I see, like, uh, the Facebook posts of people saying, oh, there's rumors of, uh, of a HasLab G.I. Joe, I laugh. I laugh. <laughs> like, they can't. Listen, they're not, even, they're, they're not even funding Galactus right now. So let's ho- let's pump the brakes for a second and remember that there aren't 14,000 G.I. Joe fans. There's less than that. And are you guys really going to pay for a flag? They're never going to do it. I'm just saying, like, don't get your hopes up about HasLab when – you have a movie that bombs. So it's just. I think my hopes up about anything has lab. <laughs> it's um, just the way business works, man. Business is simple. It's very simple. Yeah. Um, Joseph, thank you very much for the super chat. It says Hasbro has a history of killing G.I. Joe with a pathetic ending. Look at Super Joe. Yeah, Super Joe was the ending of the adventure team. Um, that, that was bad. Uh, Jeremy Ells, um, thank you for the super chat. It says can't see them pulling the plug on classified. The figures are flying off the shelves. The figures aren't getting to shelves. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right there for a second because this is kind of fandom that doesn't fully understand. I'm not saying that that anyone's you know I don't want to say anyone's stupid or anything like that. I'm just gonna say you guys are just a little uneducated on the matter at hand. When you say they're flying off the shelves, do you know why they're flying off the shelves? Because they're getting one case. One case. Do you know why they're getting one case? They're getting one case because the retail does not have faith in carrying the brand. They're not making a hundred thousand pieces of a legends wave. They're making maybe 10,000 pieces of this. So Jeremy, I understand you, that you, you feel like that's that, you know, shows like, Oh, they're flying out. They're not flying off the shelves. They're flying off the shelves in one case. Because retail is not taking enough of it. Look at uh, look at Origins. How many how many He-Man and Skeletors do you see? That's overordering. That's a problem with overordering. GI Joe, they're not getting that. You see, one look. Okay, perfect example. Go into Walmart or Target. Look at the the He-Man Origins and look at how many tags and ha- how many pegs they have for He-Man. I want to say I think it's six because I saw. Th- Three He-Man, three Skeletor. Then on the bottom, you had Battle Cat. Next time you're in there and you see that, go look at the pegs for Classified. I bet you there's two. But I, I bet it's not even two. I bet it's one. Go look. It's probably mixed in with the Power Rangers and over there in that section, probably with the Ghostbusters that are still sitting on the shelves there. Get one. And when retail sets a shelf and they give you one or two pegs, they're not going to order enough to keep a bunch in the back. They want to order enough to put out there because what's the point of toys in the back? You want to put them out so they sell. That's why you see a bunch of He-Man and Skeletor. They don't want that shit sitting in the back. They want it out there so they can just get rid of it. So, just, just a little uh, yeah, I, on that. I don't think I don't think Jeremy's going to listen to you. He's already fighting a former Hasbro toy designer who's designing his own toy line. He's saying, "Not true. Target has produced fifty thousand Cobra Troopers alone." It's like, dude, why are why are you fighting the guy that actually worked for Hasbro and knows how this works? Why on so, earth? I I love to know where where did, did you get sales numbers? Did you get sales data? Did you did you get that from Target or Hasbro? I'm just curious. I'm just curious where you're getting the numbers from. The fifty thousand numbers. Stuff out. <laughs> um, Robert Chambers, thank you for the super chat. It says, "Welcome back, Bobby. Stay safe. Looking forward." To the figures and comics and Desert Rat, of course, maybe a few others. Well, in the leaked announcements earlier this week, um, Hasbro are 
Um, it was leaked that one of the classified releases early next year is going to be a dusty figure. Um, let's let's see how we stack up against each other. <laughs> dusty and Desert I mean, it would it, listen. It would make sense because you. It's a lot of reuse. Like I saw that thing for Dusty. I'm like, oh, that's easy. That's easy to make because he's probably just going to be the the Flint or Duke body or something like that. You're going to see a lot of reuse on that figure, and that's probably what you're going to get moving forward. I mean, the whole. A, a good majority of the figures in the line have been reused tooling. Uh, you know, like like Zartan is is new, which and he's one of the best figures. But you know, there's a lot of reuse as far as like everyone else he reuses a lot of parts, and that's that's just you know a smart way to do it because you're not putting a ton of tooling into it to retool uh, every new figure, but you're putting enough to justify you know that tooling because you want to get multiple uses out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we better catch up on these super chats. So, uh, Resolute123, um, thank you very much, Dave. He says, what if G.I. Joe was done in a miniseries format like the movie Band of Brothers? What are your thoughts? I, I, I would like that. You know, that gives you, as I mentioned earlier, like in the comic run, they shouldn't be making movies, uh, Origins movies. They should be team-based about G.I. Joe. But in, in a format like that, you can, in a certain episode, you know, go back and look at the origin of a particular character. But it's never going to happen. Um, um, Joseph Dickerson, thank you for the super chat. He says, preach on Michael about Hasbro and the horrible execs. Just got to Boston on a business trip and immediately had to put this on. A appointment TV. G.I. Joe is now a Morbund. I don't even know what Morbund means. Brand. A dead brand. Um, I'll keep buying originals. A world made of cardboard. It says uh, the rumors of Disney buying Hasbro. Any truth? I haven't heard that rumor. Thank you for the super no. chat, by the way. World made of cardboard. That that was a rumor back. You know, it, that's kind of been swirling around for years, even when I was there. And Disney won't buy Hasbro because I don't think Disney wants to deal with the the manufacturing process of of toys. I think they want to just paste like let someone else handle that madness. Let Let's focus on our, our entertainment, our theme parks and that sort of stuff. That's, you know, if they, if they wanted to, they probably would have already, or they would have bought Mattel when Mattel was $4 a share. You know, it's it, to, to them. It's, I, I don't think they want to get into that, that ring. Uh, Jeremy L. Thank you for another super chat. He says, you can look into the source code on the target site. They sold 30,000 Cobra troopers during the first few days of their summer target initiative. I'll look into it, but retail doesn't like they don't share sales data. Like they don't like that's private stuff between company and, and retail. So, but still, thirty thousand. Okay, thirty thousand compared to what a hundred thousand of a of a, a a a lame wave for for legends. It's it's not even the same. It, it's not, you know. And you you also you made a fact about a, a troop builder, a troop builder. Give me, give me data on a on a regular character on a on a Duke, a Deshero, or or the the five snake eyes that they made. I bet you it's way less. It's easier to sell troop builders than it is to, to sell single characters. But no, uh, but by all means, don't don't listen to me. Don't listen to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's okay. okay. But hey, they're flying off the shelves, right? <laughs> KBA, thank you for the super chat. Um, I was surprised when John Steiner's character in Bumblebee didn't turn out to be Hawk. Uh, that was when I knew Paramount had no more interest in G.I. Joe. If they had made him like Duke, if they had made Cena's character Duke, it would have been one of the smarter moves they 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 would have done. Um, you know, that's that would have been a really, really smart thing to do. But going back to what I was saying, guys, that movie was being made just before. G.I. Joe 3 got canceled or whatever. So it just shows like, oh, we don't really know where this whole G.I. Joe thing is going because no one has faith in it. So let's not do that. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. I just read your comment in the chat. <laughs> you know, it's oh. what it is. Rick Astley. Uh Salvador. Um, um, but Barbie, we want room for room. <laughs> Thank you, Sal. Um, yeah. 
How long have we been going for? About, about an hour. I didn't want to keep you gentlemen too long. Um, we're all uh, we're all very busy today, so I said this would be a 90-minute stream. Um, so what are, what are your thoughts? Okay, it, it, here's a question for you, Bobby. In some of the you've got like leaked information that came out earlier, I don't know if you've seen it. Did, did, did you hear about it? Um, I, I, you know, I saw somebody needed content for their show and made a news burst about some leaked information or something like that. So I, I didn't, I didn't care to read up on it because unless something's fact, I, I really don't, I'm not going to like speculate and watch someone's stupid video because something's, you know, a leak, you know? Um, well, they, uh, yeah, lo lots of announcements, Ali Viper, Stalker. Spirit, Outback, Dusty. Um, I think there was going to be a new version of the Viper, a, a Python Patrol Viper, and some Tiger Force figures. <laughs> that, that, that that already, I mean, we, we know toy companies like to reuse parts and tooling. Um, that's what they did back back in back in the day when they created Python Patrol and, and Tiger Force. I don't know if that's a a smart move for a, for a line that doesn't even have that many characters out yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they did do, you know, a pimp daddy Destro and, you know, seven roadblocks. So you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Three Cobra commanders. Uh, Tony, thank you for the super chat. It says the Marvel comics were my entry into the toys back <laughs> in the day. And as much, as much as I love the original, a real American hero series, nothing that is coming out now gives me any joy or interest. And I, and I do blame Hasbro. Um, yeah, I, I, I've mentioned many times, I'm, I'm actually grateful that I did not grow up with the Sunbow cartoon. Um, not that I have anything against the Sunbow cartoon, but, you know, the, the, the comics had such far superior storytelling, the characters were more interesting, and growing up with that, um, yeah, I, I found that a lot better than the cartoon. Um, going back to the leak thing for a second. You know, because I know, listen, I, I get it. I get it as people that haven't worked at a toy company and they don't understand. There's that excitement. I get it. I totally get that that excitement factor. Like, oh, look, they're doing this. Look, it was leaked. Do you guys know how many decks and how many how many line reviews like I did and how much of that that data is compiled and started to move forward with and killed? At the at the last minute, do you know what I mean? Do you know how many waves of Marvel Universe that I worked on that got killed, even though we tooled items, like we tooled parts, and the like those got killed. Like, listen, there were the last wave of Marvel Universe, which was called whatever at the end there. We showed figures on the cross sell that we tooled and just never got and never they never shipped those ones because they never got made. So all I'm saying is. It's okay to get excited, but it's like, don't, don't sit there and think, no, they're making this. It leaked that we're making this. No, they're not. Just take it with a grain of salt because all that stuff changes. That stuff changes day to day. There are times where I've worked on lines where <coughs> a wave totally changed just as we were going to tooling. They just reworked everything. Or there are times where we had, say, a full line, and then all of a sudden, like, Right towards the end, they wanted to add, a, add another wave, an additional wave. Here, how fast can you get something done and thrown in there? So it's like it's it's the biggest moving wheel that is ever changing. So don't believe that just because a list of characters got leaked. Like, yeah, sure, I'm sure that was probably in a in a presentation deck. Do you know how many presentations we, we gave like of lines throughout the year? It's like you give one to upper management, then you give another one to upper management, then you give one to the sales team, then you give one to, to retail. So all those decks are constantly changing and they're getting all this data with all these characters and item numbers and this and that tons of times throughout the year. And it's going through so many different people. So if one piece of paper got, got leaked out there that, oh, here's this list of all these names of characters, that really doesn't mean as, as, as much as you guys are hoping that it means. I'm not trying to, you know, rain on anyone's parade. I'm just trying to educate you guys on how the system works. That's all I'm saying. Um, and and uh, Lyle Convoy here has got a <clears throat> quite relevant super chat. Thank you, Thomas. There's um, 30,000 30, units out of a 
uh, 1,844 target stores is 16 figures per store. If you think that's a high number, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lyo, for coming in with the facts. <laughs> I love it. My man. Um, well, made of cardboard. Thank you for another super chat. It says they must be flying off the shelves. I can't find them anywhere. Oh, wait. And, <clears throat> and even when they sell online, you know, people have these Hasbro Pulse accounts. Go on there so they you know, get the figures first, and by the time they get to entering their shipping information, ah, oh, wah, wah, sold out. So, um, KBA, thank you for the super chat. Um, I think he's got a question for you here, Bobby. He says, Action Force clearly needs Night Tiger, the Eco Ninja, combining all of the worst aspects and gimmicks of Sky Patrol and Ninja Force, etc. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. No, while while I'm at it, I, I should go to space and do some some star brigade because nothing kills a line more than going to space. <laughs> uh, Jim Largo, um, Bobby, I know you can't talk particulars, but what lessons are going into the making of the Action Force movie after seeing the GI Joe dumpster fire? <clears throat> well, so that's a that's a great question because that like I talked about it on on the Infinity Equation before, but when I was first approached by the you know the producer on the movie now and he wanted to option the movie rights i said no he you know he had a contract written up after we, we spoke a bunch and you know he had you know a great reputation and worked on some amazing stuff and i said no i said no because after reading it i was like wait a second you're taking all the rights away from me like i don't get to say in any of it like i'll be on as a as a consultant but when it comes down to it they're you're basically going to change my story however you please. And that's how Cobra Commander ended up as Duke's brother and Duke was dating Baroness and Baroness and Cobra Commander were brother and sister. That's how that happens. So I said no. And he was so taken back that like, he was probably surprised. Like, why would he say no? Why would he turn down this money, this, this guaranteed money to, you know, and have a movie made of his property. You know, I'm coming to him with this great opportunity. He's saying no. And we talked and I told him exactly why. And he was like, wow, good for you. And he said, you know what? Let's do it differently. He said, instead, let's form our own production company. So we formed Steel Brigade Productions. It's he and I as, as partners, 50-50. But I have full control over what goes on in the movie. Because I'm on the movie now as an executive producer. Also, now that you know, when we had our, our weekly conversations with the director and the scriptwriter for the last how many months, if, if I didn't like an aerial, I'm like, nope, that's not the character. That's not. And there are times where we talked about something and I was kind of like, oh, and then, you know, our next conversation, I was like, guys, you know, what I thought about that. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it that way. I want to change it. I want to take, you know, take that out, do it differently, that, that sort of thing. So we're supposed to be getting uh, a draft of the script, I think, in the next week or two. And we're going to sit down and have a read through it. And it's great because if I sit there and I think it's terrible, I'm going to say it's terrible. And I want to start over. I'm going to start over. So that's the creative control that I have now with it because I'm not going to like, yes, we're, we're, when we have our conversations, you know, there are things that I'm doing in the comics that are basically the figures in their file cards is everything in the comic world. But then there's things that we're doing in the movie that are going to be different than how I'm taking it, which is cool because you can kind of get to the same spot, but do it slightly different. And, you know, things were keeping us surprised. But then there's also so also things that we figured out for the movie that I then went back and changed a character slightly in the, the comic slash figures because I liked that direction that we took over here. So, you know, um, at the end of the day, if if the movie is bad, it's going to 100 percent put the blame on me, because if if it's bad, I'm the one sitting here like letting letting that happen but you know it's not you're not going to get bad stuff to the point where i'm just gonna change a character's origin like snake eyes or duke and cobra commander being in a, a unit together you're not going to see that that level of ridiculousness uh, it's everything's going to be you know they're gonna it's gonna follow in, in tandem in a way uh just you know separate roads but you know in, in the same general direction. And I think the other thing that benefits action force is that 
it's a new brand that's that's in its infancy. The movie's in its infancy, so we're growing together. Whereas when the GI Joe movies are made, you have this 30, 30 years of history that wasn't paid attention to. So that's the difference. So you know, it's it, it the the cut is deeper when you get thirty years of history and people don't pay attention to even ten percent of it. That's that's the problem. <clears throat> Uh, laser pants, <laughs> Bobby. Being that you were only a designer at Hasbro, how could you possibly know anything else about the company besides design? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, instead of sitting at my desk just you know designing toys, you know, I went to meetings, you know, meetings that I didn't have to go to, like sales meetings and upper management line reviews and these sort of things. I also presented to upper management and sales and retail because I wanted to be the one that's seeing like how my line is being handled and what the decisions are being made. And, you know, that ultimately, you know, caused some friction because then I was able to like, say like, guys, why are we doing this? This is a terrible idea. And, you know, that was that. And uh, Jay famous. Thank you for the super chat. He says, Hey Bobby Hasbro probably haven't <laughs> renewed their rights to Mike power atomic man. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let me focus on action force right now. So, so, so the action force movie, uh, I must have been, you must have misled me because I thought it was going to be a spoof and like, you know, Condor was going to be played by Ben Stiller and <laughs> <laughs> Trigger was going to be played by Vince it's, Vaughn. You know what? It's, it's going to be very much like a Tropic Thunder type movie. You know, it's going to yeah. be a spoof in that sense. So I'm really, look, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Who, uh, have, have you got any kind of fantasy casting ideas, Michael? You're. Uh, for the Action Force film, um, hmm. Well, I was actually, uh, I, I was actually talking to Bobby today just about. I, I woke up and I realized there were there were these other individuals that I thought would be you know cool for Action Force. I won't I won't go into that because I'm not Balibers. Um, but I wasn't thinking movie. I was thinking just like you know action figures. Okay. Um, yeah. but as far as like casting for. An action force film. Um, all, all I all I would focus on as a an outsider um, would simply be that I think Action Force could be the first film where the multinational individuals who make up the force, the 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 heroes of the film, are actually casted nationality specific so that nobody's faking an accent back and forth like i love it i love it where it's like laura croft is played by angelina jolie and then it's like can we maybe get like an actual british woman to do that and then it's like <laughs> laura croft is alicia vikander she's from like scandinavia can we actually get maybe like a british woman to play that that role you know that's like <laughs> hugh jackman is Wolverine, and it's like, well, I mean, I, I like Hugh Jackman in this thing, but it's Hollywood's always like, hey, can we find somebody and give them an added challenge on top of having to play the role itself? Like, like it, it's so weird to me. So I would love to have Action Force actually have like Condor is an actual British actor, and you know, slot him in. You know, just boop, 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 boop. that's what I would like to see. And I know that's like a very procedural thing, but Hollywood, it's like on posters. Like on movie posters, they always put the heads opposite the names. And you're going, who's the asshole that keeps doing this? Like, can you not put the guy who's got or girl who's got left credit on the left side of the poster? And then they're always flipping the names. It's like an OCD thing. It's not my OCD. It's their OCD. It's like, oh, we can't have the names actually above the people that are on the poster. Let's confuse the issue. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, James Salzberg, thank you for the super chat. He says, Jason Statham is Tony Roberts. Um, <laughs> look, you know, the perfect person to play Desert Rat is Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> 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 um, so... I've kind of got a question for you, for you, Bobby. It's very similar to what, uh, sorry, I don't remember who it was. You sent the super chat and asking you, you know, uh, how's the Action Force movie? What, what mistakes are you going to learn? What mistakes have you learned from the time at Hasbro? And I, I've got my own kind of thoughts on this, but 
what, what, what's your kind of sales pitch? What is it you're doing different with action for that's going to make it superior to, um, to like GIJ classifieds? Well, I think that the thing that we didn't do enough at Hasbro was, you know, listening to what the actual consumer wanted. Um, you know, and, and there it was tough because you were, you know, you had a cost you had to hit, you had a royalty you were working on with Marvel. And, you know, so you were kind of designing with one arm tied behind your back. Whereas, you know, with Action Force, I have the freedom to to do it. Uh, how I how I see fit, and also it's like I want to do it the way the, the the people buying it want it, and you know it's it, it's been a lot of changes have been you know fan oriented. I I don't and I'm not a huge fan of butterfly joints, but you know it was it was a voted thing that I let the fans decide on. People spoke; they said they wanted butterfly joints. Also, it's like well, if you want that combat pistol pose, you got to you know you got to be able to go cross body, so you need butterfly joints for that. The slot on the figure stand for the file card, that was, uh, you know, a fan suggested thing. The fact that the backpacks open up instead of having the panel glued on was something a fan brought up during a live stream. So all that stuff is is fan generated, uh, you know, effects on the line. And, you know, I'm trying to think of like mistakes along the way. I think, you know, I underestimated on on certain things where. When I did the prototype armament set, I, you know, I was like, ah, you know, I'll, I'll just do, you know, a thousand of them because, you know, it's, you know, maybe it'll be, you know, it's just black weapons and, and things like that. And it's like, I could have done 3000 of them and I would have sold out of all of them. So, you know, I, I wish I had done more there uh, to, to get more out there. Um, you know, uh, I guess, uh, you know, the the fan response to when I initially did the first Kickstarter that didn't go through. And then I let people vote on the characters for the second Kickstarter. There were things that, that I, I judged slightly incorrect. So, um, you know, I think uh, there, there haven't luckily knock on wood, uh, I haven't experienced huge mistakes. Uh, you know, as far, as far as that goes, um, everything's been going really well. Uh, you know, the, the only, you know, problems have been COVID and factory issues. So, you know, I'm constantly looking into other factories and, you know, cause it's like, I'm always looking at how to make this line better, how to make the brand evolve, because I'm not just looking at one series. Like I'm already thinking well ahead. Like I'm trying to plan and, and keep things going. I'm trying to plan for the comics because you can't really take like time off with this and then let your, your brand get stale. You have to keep it going. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, I don't want it to, to be this, this one and done kind of, kind of, kind of line. I want this, I want this to be big. Like I want there to be animation. I want there to be video games. Um, you know, so mistakes, I, you know, there haven't, luckily there haven't been huge mistakes uh, as far as my time at Hasbro mistakes. I think, I, I wouldn't really call it a mistake because I wouldn't do it any differently. Um, but I think the one thing that got me put into the group that got laid off was I was very outspoken, um, as you can tell. But I also I really? fought for, I fought for the product. I fought for the product and I fought for the fans. I, I you know you can never say that I wasn't passionate about the stuff that I worked on. Where it drives me nuts when you have people, especially like the majority of the Star Wars brand. It's like they're not real fans. They're like you know, Fairweather Star Wars fans. They don't like know the true history of everything or like understand like what the consumers want and this and that. It's like, there's a reason why I have a $20 bill sound, uh, signed by, you know, a senior VP of Hasbro is because I was right and he was wrong. And he was wrong about a major thing. And it's like, that's the guy that was running the Marvel brand at the time. So it's like, if that guy's wrong and doesn't understand his brand, then maybe you should listen to the designer who is designing this stuff for the people that are buying it. You know, yes, I understand it's a company and they have to worry about, you know, their bottom line and this and that. But at the end of the day, man, you know, you're not going to get your bottom line unless you're making the right thing for people. Now, granted, it's like legend sells like crazy. You can put anything in a legend box and it'll sell. But, you know, there were, there were strategic things that I think that I fought that, killed lines like the 12 inch marvel legends line I, i've talked about that before how just you know 
decisions were made against what I said it should be, and and the line failed right out of the gate. So it's you know, but there's things that I fought for that turned out to be super right. But no one, you know, no one there remembered them enough to say, oh, well, you know what, he was really right on that one. No, they look at it as like, oh, well, you know, he 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 challenges us a lot. He challenges us to be better. So you know, let's we don't we don't want that. We just want a yes man. We want a guy who's just going to say yes and do what we tell him to do and not worry about you know how good the product is. I cared about the product and I still to this day care about the product. Yep. Uh, Robert Chambers, thank you for the super chat. He says, uh, only Desert Red is Tony because the others are not man enough for the, for the role. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, t- I'm too lazy to get into shape. Uh, I don't want any rumors about me actually being in the film. <laughs> um, uh, Chris, thank you for the super chat. He says, Bobby, uh, but Bobby, fans come first with Hasbro. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me, let me, ask, let me um, ask you a question. How these fan first things, how long did it take them to do them? You know, if fans are first, shouldn't you have been doing them for the last five years? Just a thought. Yeah. Um, Sonny Frisch, uh, aren't there just two nations currently involved in Action Force? Are there more coming up? The, um, French GIGN, German KSK, GSG9, Aussie SAS. Yeah. Uh, so the thing with Action Force is you can't have the, you know, the federal government of the United States crumble and not have it affect the rest of the world. We just haven't gotten to that that storytelling yet. But yes, it 100% affects all that stuff. You know, that stuff Bill and I talk about how that's going to play a major factor. And, you know, it's just, we just haven't gotten there yet, you know, but in, in due time. Um, Peppermint oil capsule is a new name or YouTube handle of, of her. Thank you for the super chat. It's his, it's his first super chat. Hi, Mr. Valor. I realize you can't use the original Palatoy characters, but will there be any veiled callbacks to the original action force in the film? Well, I mean, you know, it's I ideally I would love to have Desert Rat in the movie. And, you know, Desert Rat is a callback to, you know, the original Palatoy figure. Uh, you know, Condor is British SAS. So that's a direct callback to the Palatoy line. But, you know, I when I did it, I wanted to make sure that I was uh, paying respect to what came before. But also this is its own thing. So I don't want to just keep, you know, yes, I could have bought trademark for Baron Iron Blood and, uh you know, red shadows, but I, I didn't, cause I didn't, I wanted to create something new. I wanted it to be something, you know, from my mind that, that, that I created. So yeah, you know, I got steel brigade in there and, you know, action force itself is, is, you know, the, the, the trademark of the name, but this is something all new and I'm kind of glad that it's, it's something all new. And Jim Largo says, kudos to Michael French for not mentioning to Bobby the idea of an Australian sniper who suspiciously looks like Kylie Minogue. An awesome idea, by the way. <laughs> see, so that's the beautiful thing that just happened here. Did you see how that turned around? I have seeded that. So now I don't have to say it anymore because now everybody accepts it as a great idea. I'm sure I've mentioned it to Bobby more than once. It's listen, <laughs> it's a great idea. If you guys think I'm not trying to find a, a, a way to do it, you're crazy. I you're know that. I know crazy. that. And so. if it ha- if it was to happen, I should be so lucky. I mean, <laughs> so I, I I am just happy to be able to suggest something like that to a decision maker and have them consider it. That is that is worth its weight in gold to me. Well, guys, listen, everything Michael says, I, I tend to listen to. I mean, listen, he made a very great point about the, you know, the actors being from their respected nations, the character they're playing. That was a major rule that I had when we were putting the deck together for the characters. And I put together five or six choices for actors and actresses for characters. For instance, Condor, they are all British actors because I don't want... Like, yes, uh, like Army Hammer is, has a good look for Condor, but he's not going to play Condor because I, I want a guy who has a real British accent. Like, and that's just that's just how how it is. Uh, you know, the, the one thing and I, I 
I touched on it with Michael. We were chatting this morning was when he told me about that, you know, this one female that he saw that, you know, he's like, Oh, she, she should be a character. I, I told him about how from that genre, I picked a girl who to play one of the, you know, the, the, the female characters. She has the perfect look. She's the exact look I want for this character, but she just doesn't have that. She doesn't have the accent. I think that's, that's going to be one where I maybe make an exception if she could fake the accent. But if you're going to fake an accent, you have to fake it and be amazing. Like you have to be Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill speaks a better American accent than an American and he's not American. So I'm just saying like, you have to be on point with, mm-hmm. with your, your accent, but the majority of them will be played by actors and actresses from that nation. And, and I'm completely in agreement with that. Like, I'm not I'm not somebody that says an actor shouldn't be allowed to stretch themselves like that at certain points in their career. Like, that's cool. But I think they do it way too often, given the number of actors all over the world who are looking for parts. Sure. Like, that's my point. That's my only point. So. And, and if by some chance that, say we find an actor or an actress who I think is perfect for the role but they can't fake the accent, I might pull a Kevin Costner Robin Hood and I might just say, hey, you know what? Your acting is, is perfect and you're perfect for the role. Just don't just do not do the accent. It's fine. You know, it's just one aspect we won't have in it. It's fine. You know, I, I have never seen Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, so I downloaded How it the other you? day. How no, no, I've da- I downloaded it the other day because I've heard you know, the two of you talking about it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it. I, I just... I think at the time it came out, you know, I was I, I was trying to learn how to surf and stuff like that. So, but I've just had a brainwave. I've had a brainwave here. If you do somehow get an Australian sniper called Kylie into the line, and then she ends up in the film, what that really means is that the the perfect person to play Desert Rat is actually Robbie Williams. Huh. Shave his head. He's got the tattoos. Interesting. It can be that. Has he acted before? I don't know if has he ever acted in anything. Not that I know of. Oh, okay. That could it's, that could be a, that could be a hurdle. You know, it's 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 pure fantasy. I just want to see that just means we can get him when over United. Uh, I, I would just want to point out, you know, since you brought up that you haven't seen uh, Prince of Thieves or whatever, to everybody in the chat. <laughs> I, this is an aside, but we are talking about accents. I firmly believe that it is better if you can't do an accent to not do an accent than do a bad one. Mm-hmm. Like you take it on the chin and you just don't do it. And let me just point out one more thing for everybody in the chat. I have gone through an odious amount of research on every filmed version of Robin Hood. Kevin Costner was neither the first by a long margin, nor the last Robin Hood to not have an English accent. There are a lot of Robin Hoods that didn't, and all of them are exponentially worse than Kevin Costner, like in their non-accentness. I actually have a, a, a movie from the 50s, or it's the 40s, where it's like a black and white short film from like MGM, and it's a guy, and he's just like an American Hollywood guy in a Robin Hood costume and he's sitting there by a fake tree in a studio and he's like, hmm, me thinks I have a plan. And then the, and I'm like, oh God, like this is, so give Kevin Costner some slack, really. All right. <laughs> and uh, Monkey Boy Cloth Cat, um, um, he's, he's referring to Robbie Williams as a douche nozzle. So um <laughs> I'm not going to fall out with you over this, Monkey Boy Cloth Cat, because you're a long time supporter of this channel. I may not be as as um, I may not wave the flag quite as as much, but Michael's affinity for Kylie Minogue's music, I have the same thing with Robbie Williams for a very similar. I've now I've told Michael this story. I haven't told anyone else this story. Michael explains that you know he he went to to live in the UK for a couple of years during his formative years. You know, he went there with, he came back with hair in places he didn't have hair when he arrived. And he was listening to that music and it you know reminds him of this very special time. For me, being born in England and moving to Australia at the age of 11, 
I was always an Englishman living in Australia, going to high school, joining the Australian Army. I always wanted to go back and experience my own country um, as, as you know, see it through adult eyes. And I returned in 2001. I fell in love all over again with, with, with my own country. I, you know, I've always identified as an Englishman living in Australia, even though I have an Australian passport. So arriving there in the early 2000s, I believe it was the following year, Robbie released his Escapology album. One of my favourite songs is Feel. He, ho he held the biggest live concert in British history. Three nights at Nebworth, 125,000 people per night. When tickets originally went on sale, it was for two nights. I believe Oasis at that point held the record. So a quarter of a million tickets were sold in four hours. So he turned around, he went, righto, that's Saturday and Sunday night. We'll do Friday as well. So they put tickets on for that. That sold out in another seven hours. I got to go to Nebworth to see Robbie Williams live. Um, I will... I will forever enjoy that experience and that connection to, to I was going to say Robin Hood then, Robbie Williams. <laughs> it's early in the morning. <laughs> um, because of whenever I hear his music, particularly the music from around like the Escapology era, um, but, but also my, my mother often says that, she doesn't say that I look like him, but she's like, he, he has this attitude that, She's for some reason sees in me, and she often apparently Robbie Williams reminds her of me. So, okay, so the GI Joe stream has now moved on to Robin Hood, Robbie Williams, and our uh, experiences and musical connections to the UK. I didn't do that. I was just sitting here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, we'll, we'll 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 wrap it up here very very shortly. Um, I wanted to hand it over to my two fine guests. Um, if they have any final comments or if they would want to weigh in on a, a, I suppose, a bit of a question I'm going to pose. If classifieds does die away, or, or even if it doesn't, how do you think, how do you think Hasbro can do a G.I. Joe line and get it right from the current position they're in? Or is it doomed? Um, my short answer is without any sarcasm, I mean this sincerely. They need a new CEO and they need new leadership and they need, they need a, they need a decision-making refresh. They need to blow on that cartridge and, and hit the reset button on the Nintendo. Um, they need a complete think tank flip from where they are right now. That's my answer. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Michael as well. Uh, I think they, you know, they should embrace the change that's happening with retail right now where, you know, Toys R Us went away and they blamed a lot on Toys R Us, even though that really didn't affect much. And, you know, Target, there's only two toy aisles kind of thing for, for boys action figures. And I, I just think that with things going retail and having Pulse and being able to sell your own product, I think not having to cater to retail and worrying about that shelf space, you could do so much more. And like, that's the kind of thing I think they should focus on and be able to take chances with their own brands and do stuff and put it out on their own this way. If you're putting it out on your own, you're not paying, you know, you're not getting a, a, a retail distributor, you know, wholesale, uh, you know, fee for for you know you're not getting your you know if if a uh, i'm not saying this these are the actual numbers i'm just saying that on a 25 dollar classified figure it probably costs four dollars to make the retailer is probably paying seven so it's like you can end up making so much more if you just do it yourself and i i would like to see them get more to that because retail i feel like ruined uh, a lot of lines, the fact that, you know, they're not taking X amount of things and this and that, but now it's like, we all, we all buy online. So embrace that, use that and be, and just take more chances. I, you know, they, they take chances with things that are already proven, you know, they like, Oh, they, they look at all these chances they take with legends. Yeah. Legends is proven and they're still not fully taking chances. Like they, they shouldn't be doing Haslab. 
Um, but that's another stream. Um, you know, they're, they're, if you just took a year and, and tried it out, you know, it's, listen, you're a, a billion dollar company. I think their, their worth is like five or $6 billion. You know, if I told you guys about the amount of money we use on freelancers, on stuff that never gets made, it would blow your freaking mind. Blow your mind. Now you look at look at it like this. I went to school. For, I can draw. I can do everything in Photoshop. Like, but I was told like, no, don't. You don't sit there and draw that figure. Pay someone to draw that figure. You have too many items to manage. So it got to the point where I'm adding so many items. But it's like I found the time to do my own input drawings, like I did on the 12 inch Marvel Legends line. But that's the kind of mentality. But also, it's like, do you know how much money I was I was paying to vendors, freelance vendors, to just do work or concept models, concept models that never really went anywhere, just to like explore an idea. Thousands, tens of thousands, twenty thousand, thirty thousands, like thousands of dollars. All I'm saying is, take a little bit of risk, put something into something. If it if it wins, it wins big. If it fails, it fails small. So just take some more risk. You know, show show some faith in your own brands. You know, stop worrying because, listen, tomorrow, if, say, the contracts, I know they re-up the contracts, but say, uh, you know, Hasbro loses Marvel and Star Wars, that company's done. You're not, that company's not, not staying in business. They're done. They're finished. So their company survives based on someone else's IP. That company wasn't built on someone else's IP. It was built on their own IP, IP that they've abandoned. I would like to see them go back and put more focus on their actual brands. Uh, Monkey Boy Cloth Cat, thank you for the super chat. It says, sorry if I offended you, Tony Serla. Um, you did not offend me in the slightest, Monkey Boy Cloth Cat. You're allowed to have your own opinion of Robbie Williams. Um, a great example of that is the fact that my dear friend Bobby Valor thinks that Conan the Destroyer is better than Conan the Barbarian, and I still love him, so... <laughs> it's a fact, buddy. <laughs> you know, you know, I have I have to just I have to just throw in there, you know, like my buddy Tim and I have very differing tastes on films, as you know. Like he has what I jokingly call bad tastes in films, and and um, but I, I love him dearly anyway. And I have actually found recently um that Bobby and I have a lot of common tastes in certain films and we've actually been able to trade a lot of great you know information intel experiences stories and just have a lot of good chats about some of those films and the peripheral things around them that we don't get to chat with a lot of other people about because those films aren't talked about very much especially not that yeah every 10 years a snarky article is made about that film because it's an anniversary and you know i'm sure bobby's been like me where he's just seen those articles and gone oh another guy that you know, it's trash in a film that doesn't deserve. Now there are films that deserve to be trashed. Um, but, so, but I think people focus on certain ones where you go, you know, we had a conversation um, uh, in a live stream about uh, Red Sonia and uh, you know, fans of power was there and Matt Swafford was with us. And, you know, we sat there going, how come Red Sonia makes a list for the worst sword and sorcery film of all time? Do you know how many bargain basement dumpster fire sword and sorcery films were made, you know, back in the late seventies to the mid eighties? Like, please, there is no way objectively that Red Sonia can be the worst sword and sorcery movie of all time, but people do it. I think because they don't deep dive into the genre, you know, they yeah. really, these are just like Buzzfeed writers that are just, writing these articles they're the ones that are keeping the whole thing alive of prince of thieves sucks because kevin costner didn't use an accent and it's like that that art that argument's so tired at this point like it was the second highest grossing film of 1991 the only film that beat it was terminator 2 like i would love to to, to earn second place i would love to lose to terminator 2 at the box office i yeah. could literally walk away and skip away with my fu money losing to terminator 2 like yeah you you didn't lose to an m night Shyamalan film right all right <laughs> and it all comes back yeah yeah so anyway i'll shut up now 
I, I, I've, I've had a very nice time tonight, Tony, being on this stream. Thank you for inviting me. It's been fun. Oh, uh, thank you for, for taking the time out of your busy schedule. It's been a pleasure. Last couple of super chats, and we will sign off here. So, Canadian Pale, um, no comment, but I appreciate the super chat. David Whitehead says, What? Cancel all my Valiverse orders immediately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lyre Convoy, thank you. He says, uh, another point to that, I love Thundercats and Transformers. Ask Michael his opinion about them, and yet we're good friends. People That's, are great in the media. That is very, very true. I, I, would, I would trust my back to Lyo all day, every day, because I don't base my friendships on what movies we like. But I will tell you, Conan the Destroyer should never be thrown into the waste bin, no matter which place you put it in the pecking order. If for nothing else, Olivia Dabo's in it. Just, just saying. So I have my and, priorities. And Bobby, can we get you to quote the Grace Jones line? Grab him and take him. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best line in the whole movie. The best. <laughs> she's so good. She she should get like top billing in that movie. She's the best. No, she headbutts Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Like headbutts him with the metal plate on her head. That's how she fights. She's awesome. I should put her in the line. I don't uh KBA, I I don't know what line was good for a Mel Brooks. Oh yeah, yeah. I can see what you're saying now, KBA. Yeah. I I actually do blame men in tights for creating the overblown argument about Kevin Costner's accent. It really yeah, it didn't stop that movie from being a hit at the time, and people received it well. I will shut up about Prince of Thieves now. Sorry about that. All well, right. you can't because someone's got another super chat about it. <laughs> Canadian Pale, thank you. Says about Prince of Thieves. Most American accents are actually displaced English ones that died out in England with the rise of received pronunciation. That's also a, a, yes, a working theory. Yes, absolutely. And Blaze uh, five one five zero. Thank you. He says, just started reviewing toys myself. Really look up to you guys. Thank you. Um, oh. And I believe I missed a super chat from Connor Fuller way, way back in the stream, uh, right near the start. So apologies, Connor Fuller. Um, he says, I need a six-inch stalker and airborne in classic design in my life. Respect to the panel. You guys are awesome. So apparently we're going to get a stalker next year. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Is he going to be called stalker or is he going to be called... Hasbro's like uh, Lon Lonzo Jr., whatever his name is in the file card, like because they're going to avoid that and they're going to call him Hasbro's so and so or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Grindhead Jim, thank you. He says, in an effort to end on a positive note, something, 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 Motu Origins. Also for Bobby, my favorite Zula quote. <laughs> ah! ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Um, I, I, I would be absolutely amazed if anyone here in this chat does not know of Michael French of Retroblasting, but please tell the audience where they can find you. Um, you can often find me down in this basement wondering how I got here. Um, day in and day out, trying to keep the dark thoughts away, trying to earn that $60 a week, wondering why did I walk away from six figures to do this? Was it that bad? I think it was. It's hard to remember now. It's all a fog. But I'm on YouTube, Retroblasting <laughs> on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Retroblasting. Instagram, Retroblasting. Um, and I'm sometimes in porta toilets, Retroblasting. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. I appreciate you asking. <laughs> and uh, Bobby Valor, where can people find you? Uh, Valiverse everywhere, Facebook, Instagram. I do not do Twitter. Um, I don't understand what Twitter is, but, uh, YouTube, I have neglected the YouTube channel because I need to hire somebody to just do my YouTube channel, but I need to hire somebody local that could just follow me around with a camera and just film content and just come up with that stuff. So if anybody lives in the Rhode Island area and wants a job and is good with social media and has good ideas for content, shoot me an email and we'll talk because I need to get more content on the YouTube channel. I've just been so busy. But yeah, uh, Valiverse everywhere. And uh, that's about it. 
Oh, and another super chat. <laughs> They're trying to keep us here. Um, KBA, thank you very much. Uh, just saying, I'm eagerly waiting my Action Force figures and the future female ones. Thanks for doing this. Um, well, That's thank you all for watching. I've been Robbie Williams. This has been Kevin Costner <laughs> and Grace Jones. And we will see you. I'm sure we'll team up again. So uh, thank you all for being here. Thanks for the uh, amazing chat today. And we'll see you next time.